In 1935, when there were just 16 teams in the major leagues, towns like Buckley, Paxton, and Flatville were starting up their own amateur teams. 75 years later, the Eastern Illinois League is still drawing crowds, and Buckley has been the longest continuous member of the league. Well, Buckley is, is very much a prominent part of the EI League. I mean, this is the 75th year, as I said, and they're the only community that has fielded a team all 75 years, so that in itself makes them unique. And then on top of that, I, I think they entered this season with about 960 wins all time, so they're closing in on 1,000 wins, which it may not seem like a lot, but when you consider that this is a Sunday to Sunday league, I mean, winning 1,000 games is uh, really a milestone. But I mean, there have been, I believe, 51 communities all together around central Illinois, going all the way as far north as Kankakee, down south to Robinson, over uh, west to, to Lexington, and of course to the state line Danville, that have had teams at one time or another. Um, so it's kind of been that type of a league, but again, Buckley's the only one that's been in from, from year, year one. You know, we've been coming to games here for, in my case, probably 45, 50 years, and it's just an event. It's what we do on a Sunday afternoon. We get together with our family and come out and watch the ball games. We might sip on a beer or two as the day goes on, but it's something that's been a Sunday afternoon event for us for, uh, again, many, many years. Through his book, league president Fred Croner hopes to preserve not only the history, but lots of stories. I think that the interesting thing about the EI League over the years and then and still up to this point in 2010 is it just involves a wide range of people. I mean, it's it's teenagers that play in high school. Uh, it might be the, the farmer down the road that, uh, you know, takes Sunday afternoon off. It might be a businessman. I mean, we've had uh, anywhere from, from bankers to sports writers. I mean, Marcus Jackson from the News Gazette is one of the prominent players in the league, and uh, he's worked for us for several years now. So it's just all sorts of people, uh, neighbors, friends, and, and I, I think that's one of the neat things about the league is it's been, you don't necessarily have the people coming in, you know, minor league baseball like they have in Danville, is, it's wonderful. And, and a lot of those players, you know, maybe at some time will become major league players. They don't necessarily have the name recognition for the fans early in the summer, whereas a lot of these players are, are homegrown players. They've been around here for years and, and their families have been around here. And I think that's one of the neat things about the league. Shivey Field in Buckley is named for Virgil Shivey who won over 80 games for the Dutch Masters with a career batting average of 288. He was a pitcher he was. He, he was a good pitcher. I mean, they, he was hard to beat. He was really competitive. A couple Hall of Fame pitchers took to the mound in EI League games. Famous Negro League and Major League pitcher Satchel Paige twice played in the league's All-Star game. And the St. Louis Cardinals' Dizzy Dean once pitched for Flatville in an exhibition contest. The EI League has also produced some stars of its own. Well, one of the best stories about the EI League was, was back in the, in the early 1980s. A young man from Oakwood, Illinois, Darren Fletcher, uh, was his dad, Tom Fletcher, had played briefly with the Detroit Tigers and had relocated back. He was from around this area, relocated back to the area. And Darren was an up and coming ball player playing for the Danville Legion and then also the Royal Giants in the EI. And they thought so much of the, of the EI team that when the Danville Legion was playing on Sundays, they made their first commitment to Royal. So, I mean, Darren was going to be available and, and playing with Royal each and every Sunday that, that there were games. And Darren, as a 15 year old, was coming in here and hitting over 300 against basically college pitching. And that's when a lot of people realized he was going to be a special player. Fred Croner says the appeal of the EI League came from a time that didn't have computers or TV, and residents in towns like Buckley were looking for something to do after church on Sundays. I think probably one of the, the, the reasons that the league started, I mean, if you think about uh, when you trace back to, uh, to, to the history of the EI League back in the, in the early 1930s, I mean, you know, you, you didn't have the things that you have now. You didn't have uh, computers, you didn't have televisions, you didn't have internet. You know, a lot of the families would go to church on Sunday and then they would come out to a ball game on Sunday afternoon. At that point, uh, the EI League was not a double header league. It was, it was one nine inning game that they played on Sundays. Most of the games started at three o'clock. A few of them would start at 2.30. And a lot of the things at that time, like if you had a, a team from Paxton playing, it was basically Paxton area people. They might be, you know, Cisna Park or Milford right close by. And the same with Buckley. It was basically Buckley people. Whereas now, you know, there's, there's people playing on the Buckley League uh, team this year from Champaign-Urbana and Gifford Flatville, the same thing. Uh, but I think at the time it was just kind of a source of community pride and, and something to do. And as I read through some of the, uh, the clippings in the microfilm, I was really surprised to, to see some of the attendance figures. I mean, there, there were games that there were 3,000 people at, at these EI games on, on a Sunday afternoon. And that was not necessarily unusual. I mean, that was commonplace. And I think the reason for that, again, it was just kind of a, a community gathering. I mean, people would come out after church. They, they would eat their lunch out here. The, the locals would play. It would be their, their neighbors, their friends, their fathers, their brothers, whatever. They would just come out and, and enjoy an afternoon of baseball. 
Fred Croner says he hopes to involve some younger blood in the Eastern Illinois League with hopes that today's statistics, and more importantly the stories, will be preserved for another 75 years and beyond.